Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Keep Calm, It's Just a Snake podcast. Uh, if you guys are watching the video version of this on YouTube, as you can clearly see, it's a little different and we have a special guest. So, uh, we will get into the location in a little while, but um, we're just going to do kind of a little bit of uh, an update and just going a little bit more in depth about what how things have been going and what we're hoping for. So, uh, to get things rolling, uh, oh, by the way, uh, this episode is brought to you by Jay-Z's Reptiles merch. Please go uh, check out, we have quite a few pictures posted up on our Facebook. Um, I don't have an official website or like a Teespring or anything like that, uh, but feel free to message me if you're interested in any specific designs, colors, sizes of shirts. We still plenty of uh, plenty of t-shirts, plenty of stickers, plenty of wristbands. Keep calm, it's just a snake podcast wristbands. Um, and also, as of right now through June, 10% uh, of all t-shirt sales will be donated to Friends of Scales Rescue. Great place, go check them out. Um, the link is in the bottom of the description of this video. Uh, go check them out, they're doing wonderful things. But I digress. Here we go. A little bit of housekeeping there up front. So, uh, who the heck are you? Hi, I'm Becca. I'm the behind the scenes, silent half of Jay-Z's Reptiles. That is correct. Although, uh, yeah, I guess silent on camera. <laughs> uh, but no, in all honesty, um, if you guys have not come to the conclusion yet that like all of the videos that we do, all the species spotlights, enclosure upgrades and things like that, those are all our animals. We don't we're not outsourcing, although we will be soon. We're going to hopefully in the next coming months have some special guests over. Um, other than like the like the other guests that came over for like Snakes and Shakes and during the Spooktacular where we reached out to other people. But almost every animal that we have where it's just me on camera, it's all ours. And that takes a lot of time and work. And you do a lot of that too. I do. So basically what I'm trying to say is that... One person can't do three different rooms that are all set up differently in temps and humidity. Plus, in some of those rooms, every cage is dialed in a little bit differently for temps and humidity. And a lot of them have different diets. They all get fed different days and all these different things. And that's a lot for just me to do. So Plus going to work and taking care of just normal house things. Exactly. So. And, and so because of that, even though I have a regular 9-to-5 job and you have... Not a nine to five job, not a nine to five job, but not a normal nine to five, but I do. I have my own business, so I still work about 40 hours a week or more, sometimes less, but on average it's 40 plus. Mm -hmm. um, and so in amongst between taking care of or my business, I'm also helping with everything with the animals and helping with the channel, so on and so forth. Right. And that being said is, you know, with the animals thing, for one thing is a big thing that you do, which I very much appreciate, is you do almost all of the feeding, at least with the snakes. Yes, I do the majority of the feedings for the snakes. I help out with the veggie eaters as needed. And I do I help with the crested, gecko, crested geckos probably 25 to 40 percent of the time, just between either cleaning their food bowls or helping feed them. Um, and that's just on the food side of things. Yeah. So I also help uh, just like, the crested geckos are mostly mine. Theoretically. So, so I usually am the one that when it comes time to doing a full clean on them, I'm the one that does it. So he'll bring me the cages because we'll usually do it at the exact same time we do a deep clean and rearrange or something like that. Yeah. So I'll get to do all of the cages kind of one at a time, take everything out, put in all new substrate, decor, all of that, and um, just redecorate it and make it an entirely new environment for them to destroy because they're crested geckos. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then anything that is reusable gets fully sanitized and cleaned before it goes into another enclosure and whatnot. So. Yep. Exactly. And that's like a whole day project too. Um, sorry if you hear a little bit of stuff in the background. Uh, there's the heater going because it's kind of cold where we're at. Um, and then the stove in the background as well. So sorry about that. But, oven in the background. Oven. We're not cooking on the stove while talking on camera. 
Uh, yeah, that's technically true. Well, there's a pilot light, I guess, but, um, I digress. But yes, so she does a lot when it comes to just the regular care. Like, I do a lot of the daily checking, watering, poop cleaning, just doing, you know, basic checks on their health or behavior and just giving them once over every single day. Um, and then you also do quite a bit as well, mostly when it comes to the feeding and the cleaning and then also picking on me when it comes to the turtles and tortoises being jerk butts. Uh, well, yeah, they come and chew on us when we go in. They're mostly me. I know, they but, do. They're the worst. Yeah. Well, and I also, um, anytime we have to give medication to animals, I'm usually the one that's administering any medications. That is true. So you have a lot whole, steadier at hand than I do. That's a whole whole other thing that needs to be done in general. It's and true. someone has to do it. So. Yeah. And that kind of leads us into the first kind of update. So, in the last solo, although not exactly soloing today, um, not the Millennium Falcon kind, uh, but we talked a little bit about, oh, I think I, I think we called it six snakes, new snakes, and I think technical difficulties, because I was having a lot of issues with the new mic and stuff, um, but Pi, our Sunglow uh, call boa, um, she had a broken tooth off and it caused a big infection in her mouth, um, and it required... I think it was like four or five rounds of antibiotics and each round is i think two weeks um no it was like it was about a month a month of each round okay yeah so yeah. but she was on antibiotics for a long time and she's finally doing good her mouth still looks kind of a little bit off but that just kind of what happens unfortunately a lot of times when there's a big infection like that even though it was addressed and um taken care of very quickly scar tissue just builds up very easily but she's doing really well yeah and she had to have that incision so there's going to be scar tissue because they had to go into her mouth, cut it open, yep. to pull the tooth out. So and clean it she out. She will potentially always have a dis slightly disfigured mouth. Yes, but she is nice and healthy, and we still love her to death. Um, but with that being said, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot more has happened, unfortunately. It's been a year. It's this year has been, it's been rough for everybody, but it's for been for you guys. It's April, May. For you guys, it's May. For us, it's sitting about September. -ish. Yeah, yeah. Ish. It's 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 been a it's been quite the roller coaster. So we had, um, you know, I think Pi was still definitely getting medication. She wasn't being seen by the vet uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, I think into March is when the medication finally stopped. That sounds about right. But we had another boa who um, didn't hit the side of the tub. And get like an abscess or a broken tooth but what more than likely was probably happening from some rubbing so rubbing um a lot of snakes do sometimes because their enclosure is too small sometimes because it's too hot it's too cold the humidity's not right or sometimes they just want to get out or sometimes they're just jerks um not really sure what it is our our enclosures for the boa constrictors are for their size even what a lot of like big industrial breeders would say is a little on the big side. So I don't think it's a sizing issue and our temps are definitely spot on. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I think it's a kitty cat walking past issue. That is true. The, uh, the cat really does like to hang out down there, like at the, bo there, at the bottom of the stairs where the main snake room is. Um, he just likes to, to hang out right there. And I think there may or may not be some boas just sitting there either hitting it or just like rubbing and trying to get towards him but we had two boa constrictors just do a lot of rubbing that caused kind of like that rubbing abscess that just builds up and it can become infected so multiple trips to aurora animal hospital and multiple rounds of shots yep both uh <laughs> both oral antibiotics oral ointment and shots um not just batril so for um if any of you guys missed the last podcast um please 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 check that out uh, we did it with our uh, reptile exotic specialist vet dr dana williams willems because i there is a there is definitely an issue when it comes to exotic vets that caters exclusively or at least well enough to reptiles and she is one of the greats definitely go check that out you we can learn a lot from that podcast and i just we're really lucky that we have her to deal with this and we've actually built a little bit of rapport because uh, well, we've, as we pointed out, had that's three snakes all go, three boas just to being seen for mouth stuff, which honestly is starting to make me feel like I'm just the world's worst keeper. Uh, but one of them, the smaller one, she 
one round of antibiotics and she was entirely good. Yep. Um, and then I guess the topical on her face, so like a topical ointment. And then the other one, they did go in and scrape some stuff out, but he only had two rounds of shots just because he is bigger and we wanted to make sure it was good, yeah. but he also was good. So it, it happens. And one of the things is some people will wait forever before they take their vet in and it takes... The reptile in? Uh, yeah, like they're sorry. I don't. What did I say? You said the vet, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, um, and it just—it's part of what happens. It's just like with people, we scratch our arms and faces. Some. We just we fix it ourselves. We don't go to the doctor. Whereas we should take a we take our animals to the vet. Yep, that's it's what you should do. And uh, so that was the that was that fun parts of going to the vet multiple times. Uh, another one was uh, well. Um, as I kind of mentioned before at this point, I don't know if I'm the world's worst keeper or the best keeper ever because evidently our husbandry is so on point that female snakes are just self-cycling and producing eggs and laying them on their own or laying a couple and more are getting stuck inside. We're actually even better exotic keepers for that matter. Our boys are becoming girls. Yeah. So, and laying eggs. Yeah. So more than more than one of our colubrids, which I openly admit I am not very good at probing, and I'm not even very comfortable probing, period, or sexing uh, colubrids at all. So I'll usually let someone who is more experienced and more knowledgeable do that. And as such, we've had multiple colubrids be purchased as males, one of which was probed in front of us, probed male. Um, it was one of our corn snakes, Sierra. Uh, and if any of you guys have been following me for a long time, you know that last summer, Sierra developed eggs and laid a clutch of infertile eggs. So number one, not a boy. And number two, she got egg bound. Um, that's actually both of our adult corn snakes got egg bound last year. Unfortunately, one didn't make it because we didn't catch it because we don't brewmate them. We don't adjust their temps at all. They just kind of sit at ambient temperature downstairs in the warmer room, like in a rack between ball pythons and boas. Never housed with anybody else. The feeding never changed, but they did it on our own. And then just recently, we had a Japanese rat snake. Again, got as a boy. Uh, even picked up a female Japanese, albino Japanese rat snake to, you know, pair with him once they both get a little bit more size. Uh, and not so much, evidently. So... Well, now, now we should probably get the other one verified as I know. a girl. We, we definitely should at this we point. We potentially like, could have a girl and a boy. We just don't know it. I know. We're, we're, <laughs> I'm going to need to have someone who, like, professionally breeds a lot of colubrids just come over, and I just need to learn how to do it very well, um, because this is getting a little ridiculous. But, um, basically, we had... We just moved the, the now female Japanese rat snake into a larger enclosure um, in the gecko room because it's a little bit cooler uh, and much more humid than the arid room or anywhere else in the house, which is good for those tropical species as well as almost every single Asian rat snake because they actually thrive under lower room temperature, room temperature uh, temps where like a basking spot is kind of in like the low to mid 80s versus like a boa or a python in the high 80s to even 90. Although I think that a lot of people keep snakes too hot, but um, she has like uh, she has a bunch of very long vines and branches and stuff to hang out. Plus, like this kind of like little enclave uh, perch in the back corner where she likes to hang out. Uh, usually, when she's digesting a meal or first thing in the morning, and then throughout the day, she'll just kind of go out and stretch out and move around. Um, but she was kind of hanging out back there, um, and you were actually the one that found her. Uh, yes. Um... I had, you had already gone to bed, yeah. and I was just kind of making the final rounds, I was going through, making sure, like, turning lights off, making sure everything was done before we went to bed, and I just looked in there, and I was like, huh, what is she, it, he, doing? I was like, that's, that's kind of weird. Those are eggs. We have a girl. Yeah. And I went and woke you up. Yep. You were a little dazed. I was very... And it's been a rough mostly <laughs> because I said, our boy's a girl. <laughs> yeah. And so I think you were processing that and you went upstairs and you looked and in fact, 
he was a she and laying eggs. Yep. And I think by the time I brought you up there, she still had well, about that that big. Much of her body was still, yeah. was yeah. still nice and swollen. So we we left her alone overnight to see if she would pass those last. It looked like two eggs. Uh, the next morning before you went to work, you had checked on her and she hadn't laid them yet, correct? Yeah, so she had laid three eggs, and usually infertile eggs are pretty small, like infertile or slug eggs. They're usually a little misshapen, and they're usually pretty small. Uh, not these. These were massive. These were, they look like fertile eggs, like almost perfectly shapen, big, nice, oval, colubrid eggs. So we incubated the three, they ended up being infertile. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, that night she would, she didn't lay, the next morning she hadn't laid. And usually you give a snake like a couple days before you have to go, oh no. Um, but because of how small she was, we immediately, and because of how, uh, busy the vet is, we immediately tried to get an appointment going. We did have to wait, I think it was two days. It was a grand total of three days after we found the eggs, um, because they weren't moving. Um, and because of how small she was, because, um, I, I, people have told me that a lot of people keep Japanese rat snakes and just go onto the Facebook groups. You're, you're liars. You're all liars. No one keeps Japanese rat snakes. I can't find any decent, consistent, good sources of growth rates, of brumation, of uh, incubation time for the eggs, incubation time between copulation uh, and egg laying. Nothing. I can't find it anywhere. So you're you're lying to me. Um, but so because we don't know a whole lot about it at all, and even uh, the vet hadn't worked too much, hadn't worked with that species at all. She certainly knows a lot. Um, probably has forgotten more about care for reptiles than I honestly know now. But um, it was kind of okay. So here's what we can do: is number one, we can kind of give it this shot that will like kind of increase. Um, its ability to contract a little the further contractions to kind of help and push that out. But that unfortunately can risk, uh, you know, it can risk tearing and it could essentially make it so she can no longer lay eggs in the future because of how small she was. Um, and then the next one was to, well, the, and then the next one, if we wanted to move that route, um, another side option would be to mildly sedate her and try to kind of, you know, toothpaste and help work them out. Um, and if those don't move after that, this comes surgery. Um, surgery for any reptile can be very stressful and very dangerous. And I mean, she's she's very small. I've shown her in a couple of videos, but she's definitely got some length on her. She's over three feet long easily, but maybe, what do you think? Like the width of my finger, like the diameter of my finger? I'd say so. Yeah, yeah that, so that looks about right. pretty at, small. At max, not yeah. wide. And they can get, they, they don't, they're not big snakes by any means, but they can easily get, you know, some decent girth to them and four and a half to five feet long. So she's still pretty small, but in the end, um, so we went there the first time and she got a shot to kind of help with that, see if it would come out on her own because we didn't want to risk like stressing her or tearing something inside. And then we brought her back. So left work, pick her up, go there, come back, drop her off, go back to work. Yeah, you had to do that in the middle of your work day. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I complain about my work a lot, but I don't know too many jobs where I can just like, hey, I got to go, bye, and then come back like two and a half hours later. Yeah. Um, but didn't happen. So the next day we had to, or not the next day, a couple days later to see if we can give her time to do that. Didn't happen. Back to the vet again. Um, and then that's the, the second option where she basically what we did is we just kind of dropped her off and then in between patients while uh, the vet was doing essentially catching up on paperwork, she just mildly sedated her on her desk um, and just kind of helped and then worked her eggs out and then let her slowly recover on her own. But she's back. All the eggs are out. They were infertile. Um, they were massive. They were eggs. very large. Um, I, haven't, I don't like to do a whole lot of like medical or anything like that because the eggs do look a little off, but I still kind of classified in that. I don't like to post any veterinary care or anything that could be deemed as like uh, sensitive material. So if you want to go check those out, go check out my Patreon. Um, they're posted in there. Um, just a dollar a month really helps to that. But that being said, uh, shameless plug. So all sorts of trips to the vet. 
And that's not all of them. So that's just most. That's of them. most of them. So we have also, and I know that I keep saying that I'm not, but I absolutely seem to be doing so. Sorry uh, for any of you guys who know me. Drinking water is really weird. Um, I'm not hydrated. I know it's Mountain Dew is the nectar of gods, and I'm out. <laughs> so apologies. We're running. It's. It's really weird. It's really late, and it doesn't seem like it, but it's really late how we're recording this podcast right now. But uh, I keep saying that I'm not looking for new snakes. I don't know if I will ever believe that statement from him, ever. I know. Ever. It's it's true. <laughs> so uh, we've acquired a couple new colubrids. It's like in the previous podcast, solo podcast, I said that we've gotten a couple new colubrids, baby like little, little corn snakes and, and Brooks Kings and stuff. Um, and then we acquired a couple animals from Nature's Educators. Go check them out. Um, they did one of the, um, excuse me, Reptile Spooktacular videos, uh, which, uh, quick side note here. Um, so in addition to all the stuff that you do when it comes to like helping and take care of things, you're also the cameraman, but you're also the one who does all of the video editing. Well, I don't do all of it. I just do probably 95% of it. Um. I come up with ideas for videos. I sit there and make sure the flow is good or as good as I can make it. I find the photos to put on top of it. Yep. Those Halloween spooktacular videos were my brainchild. Go watch them, check them out, like them, share them with your friends because they're awesome. Yeah, seriously. So unless it's me just standing there and talking straight for like 15 minutes and I just kind of cut the edges and put the watermark on there, she does all of it and... She had the greatest idea ever, and I'm really bummed that these didn't get a whole lot of traction. So I'm just going to kind of keep reposting these, especially come October again, where every video that we put out for the month of October, we did a different, like, Halloween-themed, spooky, misunderstood animal. Um, and that was her idea, then leaving it to me to do all the research and find the people to help talk about those things. I helped. That is, yeah, I guess that's true. Um, <laughs> but still... Uh, we had Nature's Educators. They helped us do the one about um, owls and crows because, you know, can't do Halloween without owls or crows. Um, and they get a lot of, they mostly do the birds of prey and things like that, but they also have quite a few reptiles that come in there. And it's not necessarily in their wheelhouse. Um, and so between 2020 and COVID and everything slowing down and just not really having the best means to take care of them uh, because we started to establish that relationship they've given us a few of their animals that way we can better take care of them um and then hopefully fingers crossed in the future coming up uh we will be able to do our own educational uh programs with mainly just the reptiles and many of them will be featured in there as just a variety of different animals because i think it'd be really cool to have something more than just the giant yellow snake the bearded dragon and a ball python that's just me but well, I mean, our bearded dragon doesn't like anything, so we won't have a bearded She's dragon. She's just the worst. Um, <laughs> I know, it's going to be bad when we're bringing the iguanas before the bearded dragon. I mean, this is true. But, so. with that being said, uh, we've gotten some new snakes! Uh, some of which were uh, as a result of my own volition, and others were not. Um, so, a couple of seeking out specific species which I'm still battling with myself between let's do fun new ball python and boa morphs and let's do different species. So I'm mostly doing the species route right now. And I just sit back here smiling and nodding when he tells me this is the last one. I know. Well, a little, <laughs> I, I say I'm not actively looking for more ball pythons and then I go see a really cool ball python collection. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, he does that. Uh, but, so we got a bunch of new baby colubrids, um, and I will probably not divulge too much information about them, uh, they so have to that way... quarantine. Yep, and quarantine just keeps restarting, so if any of you have larger collections or have more than one reptile, I do recommend, uh, quarantining them in a different part of the house, in a different room, not messing with the same day, for at least 90 days. And during that 90 days, it's best not to get another snake. Because then that 90 days restarts, uh, and I've done that like five times. So you're not going to see them much. I'm not going to talk about them a whole lot, but I'm not going to reveal them because then I'm going to lose content down the road. But with that being said, um, although I do have an unboxing video coming out, um, I think it'll be Saturday's video. It's Saturdays or Tuesdays. Soon. It's Don't coming out soon. Yeah, of a really cool pair of new snakes that we picked up. Um, 
that they are, I'm pretty sure I didn't get bit on video. I really don't like I showing don't think, that. I don't, I, think I don't remember. Did. I think it was right it's out. It was like immediately he tagged me. Yeah. But um, go stay tuned for that video because you're going to see a pair of really, really cool, not necessarily rare, but uncommon and very interesting snakes. So stay tuned for that. Um, but with that being said, there are also a pair of boas that we tried to, uh, that we, we tried to come They were not on. a pair of boas. Yes. Sorry. There were two separate boas. So. Two separate instances. As I've mentioned before, uh, cause you are correct. As I mentioned before in other podcasts and other videos, we had back when we were really first got started into the larger keeping and starting to breed, we wanted to be the next big boa people like i'm coming for you tracy barker i'm gonna be that boa person right we weren't uh well so we slowly well slowly we acquired a large number of fairly high-end boas from you know reputable people from craigslist acquisitions from local people we quarantined them all appropriately made sure they were all healthy all of that jazz and then we had an animal unfortunately pass away from what after the necropsy realized revealed was arena virus or ibd so we got the whole collection tested yeah had to take out a loan from my retirement plan to test well into the double digits of animals including That's paid off right yeah, yeah we, we yeah. paid it off it took three years uh but including a lot of ball pythons and carpet pythons because a boa constrictor and really any boa species can carry it i don't know of any times where anything like a rosy boa or a sand boa or even like a ground boa has ever contracted that but i do know that pretty much all of the boa constrictors the imperators doomerals and um a couple emerald tree boas i do know have contracted it so every single boa that we get regardless of what species it is gets tested for arena virus so the first one is someone approached us online on like one of the Facebook groups who had seen some of the content because uh, I spam and repost the, all, every video that I have in every single Facebook group that I'm part of locally in Colorado. Um, and they went, hey, basically, I'm not really physically able to take care of this snake anymore. You seem like you care a lot and you're very passionate and I want this animal to go to a good home. Could you take this boa constrictor? Just a just a Guyana, a female Guyana boa. And I go, well, I do like boa constrictors. I'm a boa guy, but so here's the deal. Um, no matter, whenever I'm looking at getting a new boa constrictor, there's a whole conversation that needs to happen. Um, and someone is very quick to remind me to do as much whenever I go, hey, I look at this really cool snake. I really kind of want to get it. Um, which is, you know, hey, here's the deal. I do this every single time because responsible keepering, right? Uh, so I test this and it's, you know, this $400 snake instantly becomes a $650 snake because we have to have a vet appointment. We have to do the IBD test. And so what that involves is we take it to, again, Aurora Animal Hospital and they do a either saliva swab or a uh, draw. blood draw. It gets boxed up overnighted to University of Miami, Florida, uh, which their labs are probably the number one in the country when it comes to testing things like this. And I think that includes NIDO um, as well, which is probably going to be something that we're going to start doing here in the near future too, is testing for NIDO virus as well. Um, just haven't been acquiring pythons or anything like that for a while. But yeah, that's a whole other yeah. thing. Um, and so this person says, oh, okay, I mean, essentially she was... Well, and based on her size, we just, we didn't have the space to quarantine her. Properly. So... Well, then we just, we didn't have space to quarantine. Yeah. And so I said, well, we, if she's willing to keep the snake through quarantine, well, not through quarantine, but through getting the test done, we won't necessarily be able to put her in our typical quarantine space, but we can't actually bring her into the house until we have a negative test. And she agreed. It was cool. Basically, we split the cost of the test. Um... She asked where she could get her tested because she lived uh, quite a bit further south than we do because we're up in kind of like the, the Denver area of Colorado. And she said, sure, we'll take them to uh, Aurora Anna Hospital, Dana Williams. We'll get her tested. And I go, okay. Um, and we had been conversing back and forth a little bit, and I wasn't sure when exactly she was going to get tested. But out of the blue, as I'm cleaning snake poop, I get a message from the vet 
and it goes, you're getting Cupcake? Cupcake's the boa. Cupcake is the largest boa constrictor I have ever interacted with, period. She is enormous. And she's not overweight by any means. She's just big. She is very long. Like she's a solid snake. When when you think boas and pythons, you know, you think like a big hefty snake. But pythons and boas have a lot different metabolisms. Their body is different. Everything is a little bit slower with boa constrictors. So like a nice round ball python is what you want to look for. With a boa constrictor, you're looking for kind of like a square, like a little, you know, like a bread box almost looking. Like a loaf of bread. That's what you want to look for with a boa constrictor. And she has that. She's just really, really big. And so I just get a slew of pictures of her and her uh, techs that were helping her that day of just posing and playing with Cupcake. Uh, so in the end, she came back uh, negative. It was great. Drove down, picked her up, got her cage, took her back, and now she's doing just fine. Uh, she's a absolutely amazing wonderful animal and i cannot wait for us to be able to start doing shows and whipping out cupcake and by whipping out i mean i'm going to probably break my back pulling her out of her tub so that is cupcake that's the reveal it's cupcake i don't have any pictures because i don't like to do that to you audio listeners out there but she will be eventually on content or if we ever do any of the virtual reptile um which i have not done really any sort of advertising about that but if you ever want to do like a virtual reptile show you'll see cupcake um but the other one we did was someone was asking about um kind of boa prices so someone you know due to the last year and however long it's been since all this started oh, they yeah. just kind of they, they got to a point that they were they couldn't really keep their collection anymore right and they had a snake that was going to be perfect for a potential breeding or a breeding project that we wanted. So we discussed it, talked with the individual, explained our the whole spiel of the getting tested, why we do the testing, made sure that in the event the snake came back positive, that we would return the snake to them, get our money back, everything like that. And so we got the snake took it to get tested and unfortunately the snake tested positive so we had to return the snake back to that individual and we were able to get our money back it's an unfortunate situation but it's part of what we're doing to hopefully take the next step in better ethical treatment and keeping where we all you know we we can take care of the animal properly but I think, and again, if you listen to the podcast a little bit with uh, Dr. Willems, um, I think a lot of times, even though people do care about them, we end up letting reptiles kind of go a long time without being seen. Um, and for a long time, there have been a lot of practices that probably should not have been overlooked as long as they did, which includes proper quarantining and larger collections um, and testing for communicable diseases. Um, especially with the onset of, you know, shipping both around the nation and internationally where you get a small IBD or rhinovirus or NIDO problem or cryptid problem somewhere and then it can spread everywhere to now they think like I think crypto is in a huge percentage of leopard geckos just period it's just in the population now and it's not great um, so we're doing the best we can to take the next steps um, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, like I said, we're going to be getting started on a NIDO testing soon, too. So that's what we're going to do because... We have to do what we have to do to make sure that our snakes and our collection are healthy. Yep. So that when we are producing, we are guaranteeing that what we are producing is also a healthy animal as well. Um, I've known a handful of people, just not necessarily through the reptile world, just in general who had reptiles who ended up passing and then because that was their baby that was their pet they did do the necropsy only to find out that it had had some communicable disease that is what it died from but it didn't display any signs of it up until it actually killed them and that's the big issue is that reptiles kind of like dogs but definitely even more so they don't show it until it's almost too late a lot of times 
So um, that's the unfortunate reality of it. And it's kind of, you know, part of the deal that we accept moving forward with this. Um, who knows, maybe it'll be like a whole thing where people will start posting that and they'll do it more regularly, fingers crossed. Um, but with that being said, um, so every single one of those things is a trip to Aurora, has Aurora Animal Hospital. While this has been going on, our lives have been absolutely bonkers outside of just that part. Um, we had the catalytic converter off the bottom of my car get cut off. And so dealing I mean for a fun two weeks. Yep. And so while we were dealing with picking up snakes from different parts of the state, um, and then dealing with the insurance company and rental cars and returning rental cars because there were screws in the tire that was rented from a property on a weekend after they closed, so I couldn't return it, and then they tell me to return it to a different property and they don't do returns there. So basically we're <laughs> leaving, leaving our house, going to work, leaving work early, going to go get the car, and then immediately driving to the other end of the state to go deal with the snake issue. I, at one point, while this was going on, left a client at the salon so I could help make things yeah. easier it's, on what we had to do. It's been a nightmare. It's been just constant. I did go back. Yeah. I helped him finish the client. It, client was okay with everything. Yeah, it's it's been constant of I honestly don't know how like clients and our work are dealing with us at this point because it's literally like, Hey, so here's the deal, I have the snake at the vet and he's a specialist, so I gotta leave Well my clients maybe like, around ten. I don't know what your job is with you. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I, I thought I would have been fired a year ago. But um it's been absolutely nuts dealing with that as well as prepping for uh so Clearly, on location. Remember I said I was going to talk about this later down the road? So we're on location. Clearly we're not in either the podcasting room or down in the main snake room or anywhere like that. We're in a... Not our house. Not our house. So this is kind of like a vacation for us. It's actually a real vacation that got put off multiple times because of COVID and everything else going on. Um, but... Uh, because of basically I, I, I stole what what you used to do where every time we would go on a trip either conveniently or not and whether I would complain or not uh, you would do anything you could to make it a business trip um, I even tried for this one I know you did. I just failed I know yeah, <laughs> you you reached out people just didn't get back um, so well, we made this into a reptile trip so while we're on our little fun vacation and if you follow her on social media, you already know where we are. But if not, uh, stay tuned very soon, uh, hopefully, if Becca can edit videos. I'll do what I can. I know, it's crazy busy, and we're going to get into more why we're still going to continue to be busy even when we get back. Because we're insane. Yeah, I know. We're, I, I make good type that. Um, so we're going to have, we saw some really cool people up here where we are at. Um, we saw amazing animals and some really cool stories uh which kind of leads us into this next part ish although i'm gonna keep going back and forth on this because that's what i do i'll try to keep him on task i know well it's how it's going we're gonna end up going back but anyway um we are going to do our best from like basically the rest of this year is our plan is to reach out more and connect with other people in the hobby and get more people involved both in our productions and hopefully just kind of linking people up. I guess you could say it's a networking focus kind of a year where we're focused on meeting people and I'm going to do my best to get more podcast guests on. We've had a lot of interest in that, but I've been not really great about saying, okay, cool. When can you do this? Let's do this. Are you free this day, this day? I just say, let me know when you have time. And that's not a good way to do that. As I'm it's learning. It's really not. You have, yeah. So, hopefully I'm going to get a lot of podcasts scheduled and pre-recorded. Um, so that way we'll be good for that. As well as doing a lot of collaborations. Maybe with local people, but... Uh, Ultimately, we want to help make the... Uh, cultivate a very... Com a community across the country within the reptile community. Yes. Uh, we it, don't want it to just stay localized to each little... Yeah. State. 
we can, we need everybody that's into reptiles to join together and be a community that helps each other on the national level and we want to be part of cultivating yeah that. and i mean we, it's definitely it's it's getting there like everybody kind of knows the big people out there everybody knows the mccurleys and the bar checks and the kaufmans and then once you move after the youtube personalities you know we know cusco and and, and garrett hartle and you know some of the people down in texas like mj oh he's not in texas but um and tiki geckos and stuff like that so we know kind of the big hitters but um just more like we we, we have a different national presence but you're right it's you know we definitely need to really stop the infighting um but yeah just connecting and getting everyone involved and everyone proactive and it's not just so so that way it's not just us arc being the one to sit there and fight constantly where if more people are involved more people are aware then we can all grow and move forward together and hopefully we can stop turning each other down yeah. well and we also want to connect with the other small business individuals in this industry and because everything like yes we have the the big names that everybody knows but there are hundreds of smaller people like you like the individuals we we saw on this trip yep. other people that we've interacted with in other states that have smaller presence that maybe in their in their little communities are well known but they're doing things that should be known by the rest of the community and that's one of the things that by bringing them on doing collaborations with them we can do our part to help boost them because again, in the end, it's we're we're all in this together, and we all have a passion for the same genre of animals, so we yeah. can share it with each other from out of state. It's it's something that I took from my industry is we're we're hairstylists, but we we're everywhere, and we have there's great hairstylists everywhere, so if we c come together and work together share each other's stuff there more people are going to know about the individuals yep it's def that's absolutely correct you couldn't have said it better myself but yeah it's i don't know what it is about the reptile community but we're definitely struggling on that we're on the struggle bus for that part um so with that being said uh because we like to make life difficult for ourselves so difficult we so, like, we thrive on crazy. So we've been gone on this trip for, it'll be what, a full seven days we'll be gone? Oh, from when we left until we get back, it'll, be, it'll have been eight days. It'll be eight days. The day we get back, we land kind of late at night. We have the evening and night to, you know, we have a great housekeeper and well, another couple people that... House sitter. House sitter. Um... Yeah, that's right. We're not, we're not bougie. I we know. Don't, we don't make that much That's money. true. Yeah, no, you're right. A great house sitter um, and someone else who kind of helps check on the reptiles more. Uh, she definitely does more of, like, the furry critters, um, which is the only reason why we're able to do these trips. Love you, Laura. It's true. Um, and as soon as we get back, we get to double check everybody to make sure they're all good uh, because after about three days, I start getting antsy uh, no matter where we go, what we're doing. Uh, and then immediately we're going to go off and uh, go pick up a, another very poor financial decision on my part. So... Follow for more details. Yep, we're going to go... Maybe it'll get its own podcast episode. If, maybe yeah. not podcast episode, maybe a species spotlight. Maybe, maybe, that maybe. That would be a good idea, species um, spotlight. And then <laughs> that is immediately happening. And then this summer, so around the 4th of July-ish time, we are driving out to Pennsylvania to go pick up another one. Another mistake. All right. Not really. All right, I'm just but... gonna I'm, I'm just gonna come out and say it. So, um, our lives are cartoons. Yes. Uh, so we, um, so we've had quite in uh, as I mentioned, we've had quite a hard year so far. Not just because of all the reptile stuff, because of other stuff as well. Uh, which includes we've lost a couple of our furry pets. We've lost a couple of them and I'm not doing the best With handling that very well and getting over that, but we decided that there's this type of dog that we really like Specific not necessarily a specific breed, but this type of dog that we really do like we like him a lot um, and then I decided that hey, you know when we get another pet dog let's get this mix and as it turns out, while it started with this mix, 
and this mix is the a great Pyrenees and Antillian Shepherd. So it's a big livestock guarding dog. Um, they have decided to establish a new breed that started with this mix, but have since been branching out to other very similar type dogs. Well, in the end, it's a breed that they're creating a new breed, but they don't want it to just be a cross. Yeah. So it's not just two specific dogs that they're breeding together. They're taking, they have this, the starter dog was a Pyrenees Anatolian mix, but he, his personality, how he acted, his size, everything was perfect. And it made this person go, you know, I really like him. I like everything about him. I want to make a breed of dog that has all of his traits. So they established a breed standard and are now creating a whole breed with that. They're part of a whole organization that, um, makes this that they they're like these are all the things you have to do x y and z for x y and z years to then submit to become an actual official breed that can then be a kc registered stuff like that but it is a livestock guarding breed that they're creating so it has other livestock guarding breeds right. in it other than just pyrenees and anatolian basically it's like how they've made all of the other purebreds that exist now where they just kind of took attributes of all these other dogs that they really liked like how a doberman pincher is both a terrier and a hound because they just stuffed a bunch of dog breeds that they really like certain attributes out and then bred for those and eventually we got that they're essentially doing the same thing with this only a little bit smarter and a little bit healthier so that way they don't have as many like the inbreeding problems as much and what this new dog breed that they're establishing is called is the Colorado Mountain Dog. We have found a farm that had a batch of puppies, a litter of puppies, and we got put on the list and we're gonna get a puppy in Eastern Pennsylvania. We are going to drive from Denver, Colorado to get a Colorado Mountain Dog in Pennsylvania. Not only that, we're picking up another one for someone else in the state that also wants one. But hey, new bloodlines coming to Colorado yeah. to diversify the gene pool. Basically, it's for all the reptile people out there, it's kind of what we want to do. And honestly, some people are just getting started in doing but with, with puppy dogs and honestly what they have been starting to do a little bit more than what, and again, what they should have been doing for a long time, but hindsight's 2020 and all that jazz. So with that being said, uh, alluding to the fact we're picking up another puppy as soon as we get back from this trip, we're I'm crazy. just going to, I'm just going to gloss over that. So yeah. we're going to have the, the pair to add a tribute to that as well as the, all the reptile stuff Pending that we do. their personalities. Yes. Uh, which meeting their parents and everything like that has been great. But, so with that in mind, come July, uh, when we're going to be driving to Pennsylvania to get a Colorado Mountain Dog, <laughs> we're going to do our best to make that a reptile road trip on the way out there, and not so much on the way back, because we're going to have a puppy that we're just going to be hauling butt back to get back, so that way we can play with the puppy before I have to go back to work. Um, we're going to reach out to as many people as we can and if anybody listening to this or watching this has any suggestions or you live somewhere between Denver and basically Philadelphia, let me know. On Email the northern side of the country. Yeah, so think like think of where those two states are. I know geography is hard for a lot of people, um, but like I'm not going to go to Georgia or to Minnesota. So, you know, along the way, so Nebraska, Iowa, Ohio, lower parts of Michigan, up, up that way, like along there. If you know anybody along the way, and we're going to do our best to reach out to some people so we can get stuff going too. But if you know of anyone or you there and or you are in that area and you are, for whatever reason, found this podcast, enjoy it. Number one, I appreciate it and thank you so much. And number two, if you think you want to be a part of that and show off some of your stuff or just hang out and talk reptiles, you know, for a little bit on our road trip out there, let me know. Email me at jayzysreptiles at gmail.com. Uh, at the bottom of this comment, check out our Facebook and Instagram, which I will get better about posting uh, more stuff other than just videos. I'm really bad about that. 
I can't judge him. I know. I've been failing on my own business as well when it comes to social media right now, so... I know. it's It's been yeah. absolutely a nightmare of crazy busy. I don't know. Literally everything, like, the majority of what we've talked about today all happened within the two and a half weeks prior to us leaving for this trip yeah. that couldn't move. So the last month has been absolutely insane yeah i it's i don't, I don't want to make it sound like i'm just constantly whining and complaining but i mean it would literally be a day where it'd be okay get up at 4 a.m take care of this go to work while i'm at work she has to finish taking care of the dogs or any of the last minute things for the reptiles schedule dogs to be babysat and then i leave work early to go pick up crickets from the reptile store because every time we have them shipped to our house they die so we pick up large boxes of crickets from a reptile store then off to another store to get dog food, off to another store to pick up greens, drop them off at the house, go pick up another dog to take care for daycare. It's and then literally nonstop. It's every go, go, go. day nonstop having that. We're crazy. And now we're just we, we, we might have a little bit yep, of a problem. We're just gonna keep it going. Um but with that being said, um that's basically all we want to just give you a little update of how things are going on and talk a little bit how uh, well, number one, I'm obviously insane, but number two, she's crazier for number one, putting up with me, and number two, for encouraging and participating in said insanity. I mean, I think that does make me the more insane one. It doesn't. Because I can say no to a lot of You absolutely it. could, and, 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 and you don't. And this podcast is partially my fault. That, it absolutely is, too. Hooray for Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, all the editing I do. I know, and that's greatly appreciated. So, with that being said, uh, just a quick little wrap up. So, if any of you are interested in being a guest on the podcast, know somebody that would like to be or come July, uh, we have kind of a limited amount of time, so we can't just like hang out and do multiple stops, although I don't imagine there will be too many people that will reach out. Um, surprise me, please. I will throw this out there. We will be making a stop in Des Moines. Yeah, we will. So, if any of you are in Des Moines... Yep. We will be there. That is true. We will. We're definitely. For food. We're making a stop in Des Moines. That's true. Um, but if any of you are interested, please let us know. Stay tuned for more reptile content with some really cool surprises, some really cool content, and some really cool creators that I don't know if I've expressed how cool and great and amazing it was to meet these people because they are showing situations and experiences that because of where we are and where they are, we don't ever have to think about the same thing and how crazy it is and the different species that they keep that I would never be able to keep and vice versa and all these really cool things. So stay tuned for those amazing content. Um, stay tuned for podcasts for some of them. Videos coming out. Um, if you have any questions, comments, things you want to see, please let us know. Uh, let's think about all I got. I think that's everything. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, it's getting kind of late here, you guys. So, or, folks. Yep. There we go, folks. Folks. <laughs> uh, ch chickadees. Um, but anyway, thank you so much again. Hope you're having a great day, and we will check you next time. Bye.